Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, esteemed uh, members of the uh, staff of the city. Came down here tonight to talk about those two ordinances. They uh, caused quite a bit of alarm for my wife and I. Uh, we, we want to ensure that uh, the freedom of assembly shall not be abridged. Uh, it was a great concern to talk about protest areas, limitations on uh, what protesters may be allowed to wear. These are, these are intrusions on uh, the Bill of Rights. And, the, and the, I was very encouraged to hear uh, that that item was pulled from uh, tonight's agenda. I hope that we can, uh, that uh, cooler heads can prevail uh, going forward on this issue. The other one is the urban camping issue. Um, what we are experiencing today in this country are Uber bills. People are poor. People become destitute. They have no place to go. The, the, it's very obvious throughout this whole discussion that uh, the shelters are overflowing. Uh, and this is with committing uh, considerable resources. We understand that there are considerable resources being, uh, being put at this problem, but we cannot criminalize homelessness. Uh, we cannot ask them to keep moving along because there is no rest. There's no respite for the homeless. So, so I was very encouraged to hear uh, City Manager Durkin with the, uh, uh, the coalition that you're building. It sounds to me like uh, there is a lot of hope uh, for a, uh, a solution to address this problem because uh, it is our faith that uh, every, every human being has inherent self-worth and they deserve respect. Also, uh, experience around the country in dealing with this, uh, the most successful uh, uh, solutions for this is to provide homes, to provide apartments, with people to have the time that they're not in crisis every day, seeking shelter, seeking food. We know that things get better for them. They get, they get their lives in order. They become productive citizens again and no longer a burden on our communities and our government. So uh, it's very encouraging to hear and uh, whatever we can do to help in that regard, uh, we would like to. Thank you very much. We already know there's laws against rioting. There's laws against vandalism. There's laws against uh, fighting in the streets. We already have these laws. We do not need to make a new law that puts uh, an onus on anybody who wants to legally and peaceably assemble. And that law that was written, I went through it, and it says, oh, you can't have more than 100 people. It gives way too much discretion to the police to break something up that they may not like that is peaceable. And we don't need that. We don't need our rights taken away. We don't need them taken away in Tucson like they have in other cities. Jason Cochran, I represent the Candace Foundation and the Roman Nation. If you don't know what the Roman Nation is, it's traditionally called gypsies. It's a slang term. And I prepared a statement regarding the urban camping. In 1929, Hitler pledged civil peace, radical economic policy for Germany. He did this by saying that the Roman people were not equivalent by economic or racially to their allies. On September 21st, 1939, Richard Heidel, head of the Reich Security, made office met with security and police, officials in Berlin, and 30,000 German and Austrian Romans were removed from the German population. They were taken to internment camps, both places where they could live outside of government, which is what you guys are trying to set up, a place for the homes to commit. Within the German borders, they were told to move, to their, move on their own or they would be relocated to temporary camps until a suitable site could be found for them. These camps were known as Auschwitz, Kelmong, Belzig, Salvador, and Treblinka. German authorities did not deport some Roma for the greater, for the greater German right to occupy Poland in 1940 and 1941. In May 1940, the SS police deported about 25,000 Romans to their deaths. In 1929, the Hayward Drive numbered 12,076. Right now, there's over less than 100 families. My family is one of them. 
CFR 1941-96 to escape these do not be persecuted. The urban camping ban that you are publicly qualifying came straight out of Hitler's words. He writes, and I quote, no German citizen should be able to camp or sleep in any or inhabit any public property, which means all public property, including alleys, streets, improved or unproved land. That's almost identical to what you just proposed. I don't think you understand the ramifications of what you're asking. The wrong people are the homeless people. My father died two years ago. I can take his place as chief of our tribe, the Roma Nation. I don't know if you realize how many Roma tribes are in the United States, but there are 176. Um, recognized by the United Nations as a nation without a, a, without a land for you. <coughs> if you pass this ban, I will use my powers as chief of the Hillel tribe. I will adopt every homeless person in the United States of America into my tribe. We will make this a, a constitutional right. We have the right by the Constitution to observe our ways of life. That is guaranteed by the United States Constitution. If you pass this ban, we will sue the state of Tucson and the Supreme Court. The Roman nation will. And we will win these bans from exercising our way of life. Because we don't want to live in houses, because we don't trust living in houses, because we want to farm and have eco societies of our own, should not be illegal. Mr. Mayor, Council, um, I'll talk about the urban <coughs> camp ordinance as well. Um, I represent myself. I've been doing outreach for the county for a number of years now, along with the Lewis Coalition of People. So, I think we have a pretty good idea about um, what happens. I don't think we're too lofty. Um, obviously, a lot of us in this loose coalition have been doing it for long enough that um, we're still very dedicated as well. <laughs> so just a couple ideas. Um, we're kind of presupposing this camping ordinance on uh, benefit to the public and local businesses. But that's what I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, the likely outcome is, is going to be different. Unfortunately, we do want to benefit the public. We do want to support local businesses, but um, I see this, the, the dispersion of the homeless population being somewhat problematic. Uh, the thing is, there are still going to be people camping on both public and private land, so the, the issue isn't going to be solved. It's going to be a little bit harder to see, but it's still going to be very much present. Um, and just from a, a money standpoint, a social justice standpoint, we're looking at an increase in ticketing, which leads to warrants and incarceration. So. A lot of money goes into keeping people warehoused uh, for the time when you're incarcerated. So we're looking at cost, uh, not only in policing and, and time spent in policing, but money that you want to spend for food when people are incarcerated, in medical care, uh, behavioral health services, um, and facilities, of course. Uh, so that's money that is essentially going to go away. It's not going to come to much good in the outset. Um, unfortunately, in my own work, I see people that are often discharged from jail to the streets. I see them at the wrong stats. Um, there is very little coordination of care. So uh, I see people discharged that have mental illness that um, don't have any medication. So obviously they're going to be picked up again. So we're looking at a drain of financial resources and personnel resources both at the city, county, and federal level. So the presupposed benefit to the public and private business is, is really a bit of an illusion. So I think if you continue with coordination, maybe uh, talk to some key members. I know some, uh, such as Pastor Tom Hill, Brother David Dewar, Gwen Gallegos, Nurse Practitioner for La Rio, myself. Uh, we can give you a good idea of some things, some, some solid, uh, a solid assessment and some, some goals. So one thing that we've thrown around is possibly uh, a uh, place where people would be allowed to camp, therefore if you're avoiding ticketing, it would make them available as a group to some of us outreach workers. It could be readily feasible also to keep people camping in their state. It could be as simple as a covered area with uh, just concrete awning, park facilities, running water, sort of washout, and, and we could allow people to camp there and, and avoid a lot of the issues. Uh, honestly, it's not going to go away by criminalizing it. Um, you should be looking at some comprehensive solutions that make uh, sense in terms of social justice and financial sense. I am here to make a statement on behalf of our city's home, which will include an acknowledgement for the Tucson Police Department, specifically the bike patrol. Um, you guys got outstanding men and women out there on that bike patrol. I witnessed it myself. Um, on October of last year, my family moved from North Carolina here to Tucson, and it didn't take long to see that there was a serious problem in the city. There are homeless people, homeless families, 
sleeping in the parks, every intersection, I see one of my neighbors that are suffering having to hold up the sign. Not all of them are drug addicts. Not all of them want money to go buy booze. And not all of them want a home. And we can't force that on them. And there is a, a very, very arrogant, a very arrogant atmosphere that I've seen with the city council. I've seen on the radio shows. I've heard the media talking heads. All they've done is ramp up hatred for our city's homeless. For 48 hours last week, my wife dropped me off as a homeless person with nothing but a cooler. I was in the character of a mentally disabled homeless person. Now, I've seen the bad in the camp, but I also saw the good. I saw the homeless people come around, a retarded man who could barely speak and had a black dog and walked with a limp, and they protected me. There were some that offered me drugs, but it's not as rampant as everyone thinks. Right now, you've got a whole bunch that are on spikes. I want to know how, before a meeting, all of a sudden, all these drugs are in that community, in the homeless camps, and I don't see enough of them down here fighting for their rights. And here's another sad part. Where's the rest of my city at? Why is it just few people going down there to feed the cold to find out what the problem is? It's apathy. It's not the city council's fault. It's not the Tucson Police Department's fault. The damn sure isn't the homeless people's fault for being homeless. Whose fault is it? I blame every single one of us. Every single one of us, that is the reason why we have the problem that we're having today. And if we cannot come together to help those less fortunate of us, this is not a city I want to live in. This is not a city I want to be representing my family. And I ask every single one of you to really consider when you go to your home tonight and you sleep in your bed, remember those are human beings on that street. And we have an obligation to take care of those less fortunate of us. And that's all I really want to say tonight. And I thank you all for that.